Uh, welcome back dear friends to our course where we are learning how the carbon calculator works. So what you see here is how the carbon calculator makes use of some information which uh, it asks the users about the travel kilometers and the mode of vehicle in generating the carbon footprint about mobility. Uh, in the last lecture, we discussed as to how the carbon footprint uh, is calculated for car travel. We said that the carbon calculator would require the information on how many kilometers the person travels by a car. Uh, it requires information as to how many people are traveling in that car on an average and then uh, the carbon calculator already has this emission factors in built in it for a diesel car, large diesel car to not time or for an LPG vehicle it is 150 gram per kilometer. All this is already input to the calculator and by using this formula as to how many kilometers are traveled into emissions per kilometer for car upon the average number of passengers the calculator gives you a carbon footprint, annual carbon footprint from the car travel. Similarly, for the bus travel, uh, the same formula is used instead of car, you substitute bus. You must know the kilometers traveled annually by the bus and you must know the emission factor and you must know the number of passengers traveling in the bus. So this again data, now for bus, you do not count the number of bus passengers because the emission factor is directly uh, available in terms of CO2 per person per kilometer. Okay. This is the practice. So, for example, for the buses which ply in India, uh, the emission factor for bus transport rate is 0 0.015 uh, kgs of CO2 emitted per person per kilometer. So, now then, then, then it becomes very easy. So, you do not then divide it by number of passengers because if you have this emission factor as per person per kilometer then straight away if you multiply it with kilometers traveled then you will get the carbon footprint for the individual okay no need of dividing it by average number of passengers uh, similarly for rail travel in indian case uh, you have the data on emission factor for rail transport per person per kilometer so we not worry about how many people are traveling by a railway in Indian case. Okay. Uh, this you must understand that this emission factors are to be obtained carefully for different countries, right? Because many things would change. Uh, if the bus is uh, operating more efficiently as in the developed world, then the emission factor would be less. Or if the number of people traveling in the bus is less, then the emission factor would be more likewise. So this data uh, has to be constructed and accordingly input in the calculator depending upon the place. So that is why uh, important for the calculator is to know uh, where the person is staying, right? This is the reason why we use that data of the location. Uh, these are again interesting data for emission factors for different categories of two wheelers. Uh, there are two wheelers uh, used in many places like for example in India you will find that scooters are used, motorcycles are used of different capacities and uh, there uh, the emission factor could be calculated from the basics again. Uh, for a scooter of, uh, of a lower capacity the emission factor would be lower. If you move to a higher category, higher capacity engine, like for example a 500cc motorcycle, the emission factor jumps from 0 0.0368 to 0 0.0597 kgs of CO2 per kilometer. Okay, so the calculator would take this data. Once I, as a user, say that I am using a motorcycle whose capacity is about 500cc, slightly less than 500cc, then uh, the calculator would take this data as 0 0.0597 and multiply it with the kilometers traveled by the user by that motorcycle uh, in a year 
and it will accordingly calculate the annual carbon footprint uh, because of the user's motorcycle travel in that year okay so this is how the calculator works